<clears throat> hey, how's everybody doing? Yeah, Darth beat everybody with the first comment. Uh, as everybody's filtering in here, I just want to open this up with saying that if you're not viewing this live, um, it's available indefinitely, basically, and so you'll be able to come back as you want to view as much of this as you'd like. And uh, yeah, basically be able to come back and see this anytime. So if you can't stay for the whole time, that's okay too. You can always come back as well. And filtering in here, I hope everybody's having a good weekend. And yeah, where's everybody from who's in here already? Had a chance to fletch them up yet? Yeah. I'd be curious. Uh, what we're going to do on this stream is we're going to run for as long as we feel like it, basically, and see how much uh, we can talk about as far as uh, the Wave Pros are concerned, and uh, basically go from there. So the, the whole point of this stream is hopefully to open up a discussion about the Wave Pro veins that I've got here that I like to shoot, that I'm producing and for sale on my website, jkaminski.com. Um, it's basically, in a nutshell, um, as people are filtering in, <clears throat> they are the same material as the wave veins from AAE. Uh, so that means they're very, very thin, very lightweight. The base of the vein is also very, very narrow as well. As you can see here, here's the vein itself. It's very thin, very flexible. <clears throat> and the whole point of that material was to basically find a hybrid between a standard compound style rubber vein and a spin wing or a mylar type vein. Because <clears throat> spin wings are a pain in the butt to replace. They break all the time, rip all the time, fall off all the time. And the, uh, the compound veins just aren't as forgiving as a mylar type vein because of the weight of them. So that's where these come in, nice and thin. And they worked really well in the original wave shape. <clears throat> But I think they had some limitations for potentially forgiveness and definitely for lower draw weights and lower bow speeds. So that's where this wave vein shape came from, which I call the Wave Pro. And uh, basically, I white label them through AAE. So it's made with the same material. It's also the same thing that the trad vein is uh, made with. So people who shoot traditional archery off the shelf, they use feathers generally. And these, the, the trad vein can be shot off the shelf because they're so flexible. They just move like a feather does. And so because of that, these can be shot off the shelf as well. So, um, yeah. So as people are now filtering, hope everybody's having a good weekend. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm having a good time. Uh, thank you, Brady. I'm doing great today. Just had a live stream for about an hour, about a half hour ago with my Discord server and my patrons uh you know just having an open q a there so i'm already ready to go and it seems like the live stream is actually doing well <clears throat> if anybody sees it dropping off let me know i i usually i have put up the uh starting a 35 foot pole to reach above the trees here because we can't cut down any trees basically because basically all of them are over a certain size, not that we'd want to cut them down anyway, we really like them. So I'm lucky now to finally have a solid internet connection. So we can do these things more often and I, I look forward to it. So if you wouldn't mind, please share the stream. I don't do social media outside of produce YouTube content. Uh, so I don't post anywhere on social media. I don't have access to that. I removed it from my phone. I've blocked it from my computer. I just waste far too much time on it. So if you wouldn't mind, it really genuinely helps me out if you guys share these streams and share my videos on social media type stuff because I just, I'm not doing it. I know I'm missing out. I know that it is the way of today, um, but I've never been happier not being on social media. So I just really want to resist that forever. Hopefully I'll do my best to not bang the, the table as well. Uh, so I don't uh, give you guys deaf ears if you're listening through headphones. <clears throat> Nice to hear, John. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you had to glue them on helical, like I said, and you're getting decent results. So, yeah, the the more helical, the better I've found in my experience. So, we can either have me just stream consciousness about about these veins, or um, you know, I'd happy to field questions from you guys about them. I'm not sure if anybody out there has shot them uh, or not. Oh yeah, so it looks like Darth Vader, Darth E Vader. Uh, shoots the regular waves at a five degree right helical. Yeah, so <clears throat> the 
regular waves, if you're shooting at that type of helical, the, the, the wave pros will, will fit in right about that same helical, maybe a degree or two less. Uh, really depends on your bow speeds and how far you're shooting. But in general, I find the more spin you get on them, the better. And, um, you know, I, I've shot them upwards of seven, eight degrees of helical at 70 meters, and they just seem to do better the more helical I put on them at that distance. 90 meters, much less, like one to two degrees. But 90 meters, you're really pushing the limits of accuracy at that distance, just ballistically. <clears throat> So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them up here. If you have any qu comments or questions, some issues you've maybe had, you're looking for uh, help with those kind of things. Uh, they are a little tough uh, to fletch because they have such a thin, narrow base. Um, really, the main thing you got to make uh, sure you have is good contact with the shaft. You have to bond the vein to the actual shaft. Otherwise, it uh, they just don't want to stick. But that's basically true for any vein. It's just these are so much smaller, the base. So it's a little bit more critical. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, thanks, Michael. I appreciate the comment there. <clears throat> Have I tried the Wave Pros for trad style or shooting off a shelf? You've been looking for some shorter feathers, but these could be a good alternative, asked Ben Tasker Mills. Yes, Ben, um, these, you, I have not actually shot them off the shelf yet, but they are made out of the same material, the same dye, the same thickness, all that stuff. It's just cut different shaped than the AAE trad vein. And the trad vein uh, can be shot off the shelf. I know people who have done that successfully, especially when they go hunting because, you know, feathers, they soak up the uh, the rain or inclement weather. And so these should do the same thing. I don't see any reason. Excuse me. I dropped it. I don't see any reason why this vein cannot be shot off the shelf. Um, I've used them also on different sized arrows. I've not put them on big fat indoor arrows, but on these Maxima Recurve RZs, I found them to be awesome. Uh, not just out of my bare bow, I shot them on my recurve as well for indoors one year, uh, or I was going to in a tournament, but I ended up not using this arrow. But it still is, a I find, to, to be pretty much a really good all-around vein. I love them for... I love them for archery as well. Sorry if anybody just went deaf. A... Uh, a bar that goes inside the cabinet and just fell down. It's been sitting up there and I don't need it anyway. So I just need to throw it out actually. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to check some of the comments here. Oh, we got people from Italy and Ukraine all over the place coming in. That's awesome. So yeah, they do, they do work off the shelf, Jeff, or they should, Jeff Anthony. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh. Darn. Looks like we dropped. Oh, I think we're back on. Sorry about that. Um, usually it doesn't drop, but every so often, depending on the satellites and such, it'll drop maybe once every hour or so for a few seconds. So if it does pop out, uh, just give me a second and it'll come right back. Um, worst case scenario, you can just hit the refresh feed and it'll pop back in for you. So um, uh, Maria, as far as taper glue, definitely gluing them. Um, you know, you can tape them on. I've not actually done that. I tried taping on feathers and I found that it just wasn't, um, I don't know, it wasn't as easy or as simple as gluing them on. Plus with the uh, the accelerator, it just makes it super fast with the, the CA glue accelerator using vein glue. It just, it's basically instant. It's as instant as tape is in my opinion. So I just throw them right on with some glue. <clears throat> yeah, yes, yeah, same John. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. I um, just ate a little bit before we started this because I had to quick eat a little bit before we started the feedback up. So. As people are filtering in, I guess I will just uh, start talking about some of the veins. Uh, DG Anthony's uh, got a question if they're suitable for compound. Compound, they are definitely not going to be durable enough if you're stacking them together. Um, from some feedback from some high-level compound shooters that I've talked to in the past, they wanted to buy AAE wave veins or they asked for them but accidentally got sent, or no, they, they wanted the AAE Plastifletch Max or whatever, which is the same shape as the regular wave, but they got waves instead. 
And they said they actually shot better than regular veins out of the compound. The only problem was if you touch them in a group at 50 meters, which, you know, you're only shooting on a single spot at 50 meters, they basically were tearing up like crazy. So they're not really durable enough to be suitable for a compound, um, but they, they should work out of a compound, no problem. <clears throat> uh, Ben's asking if I plan on making any more lengths of the Wave Pro. Um, at this point, I'm not. The amount of money that it takes to essentially just order different colors is pretty uh, exorbitant, exorbitant, exorbitant. And, uh, and it's a little bit, it's a bit much for me at this time. So that's why I've been slowly rolling out colors because it just, it costs a lot of money and the, the minimums are fairly high. I have to order like 30 to 40,000 veins at a time. And I'm only allowed like one color, uh, per, per batch. So it's, uh, there's a lot uh, that I have to order in order for that to happen. So to go different lengths, that's the same thing. Plus then if it's a, requires a different dye, <clears throat> then you'd, you'd need to get that. So, you know, I find that between the regular wave, the wave pro and the trad veins, you've got just about all you need. So if I were to be building an indoor arrow and I didn't want to use a feather and I didn't want to use the wave pros, I would just throw the AAE trad vein on because it's already longer and it's made out of the same material. So it's already there. And, it, and to me, it doesn't quite make sense uh, to, to, to do a whole, a whole other thing, a whole lot more expense for something that's already out there in the market. So uh, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, Robert, you haven't had time to shoot them yet, but I, I'm glad you've uh, been able to fletch them. That's awesome. Uh, Darth Vader, yes, they do come with uh, the primer pre-applied, so it's best to not do anything. Just clean the shafts, throw some glue on, and go for it, and they'll stick great. Uh, Joda's got a question if they're going to be available at Lancaster anytime soon. Chances are no. Um, the the uh, margins that they ask for are not feasible to keep these veins affordable to you. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot, I can keep them more affordable to more people by not having a distrib distributor. I am happy to have wholesale accounts. So if you are a shop owner, or if you know your shop owner, I have no minimums when it comes to setting wholesale accounts. And if they're interested in carrying some, which could make it cheaper for you to get them and have to skip the shipping, um, just have them contact me through my website, jakekaminski.com and, uh, and we'll set them up. So that way it's, uh, you know, potentially better for them as well for you. So I do have uh, wholesale accounts, but not distributor accounts. And Lancaster is a distributor and a wholesaler. So it just, it's just not feasible. Um, so I, I, I'm going to reach out to them and see, um, and just kind of say, Hey, this is the best I can do and see what they, what they say, but I haven't had that time yet. <clears throat> uh, Caesars says some of the pro veins get kind of wavy after a bit. Can that be fixed or do you need to replace them? It really depends on how bad they have gotten. Um, if they are stretched, the pretty much nothing is going to fix that. But if they're slightly like bent, crinkled or wavy, um, you can hit them with some heat. So if you have a heat gun on low, maybe a hair dryer on high and just sit there and heat up the vein and you actually see it go back to its original shape and then just let it cool down without any sort of uh, distortion or pressure on it and it should hold its shape. But in my experience, I've, I've shot them with chunks missing out of them and they still hit the same spot. It's really just as long as you're noticing that the arrows are not, like as long as they're not grouping uh, by themselves or not in the group anymore, then you can still shoot them just fine. Would I shoot them in a tournament damaged? No, uh, of course not. Um, mostly because I want to make sure that everything's good. So my mental game's on top as far as where it could be. So I make sure that, um, you know, I just maintain my equipment as best as possible for tournaments and such. But for practice, yeah. I mean, if they're falling off too flat, as long as it's still hitting in the group, I don't care. <clears throat> um... Yeah, uh, Derek, it'll kind of uh, flow in and out as far as the feed is concerned, depending on how much connection I have. So it may, the, the max setting that I've got here, because I'm just running off the webcam on my computer, I tried to hook up a, a uh, camera, but I've got some bugs to work out there and figure out why it won't connect first. 
Uh, so it's it's only limited to 720 right now. So it's not not even 1080p. Uh, Renee is asking if I ever uh, tested them for fletched. I have not tested them for fletched. I don't see why they wouldn't work. Uh, hey, for fletched is better. That means you're using more of them. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, there's there's no reason why they wouldn't work for fletched. <clears throat> Um, Dar said, yeah, yeah, you basically, especially if like if you're passing through, it's not no, no vein except a compound vein is going to survive a pass through. Um, these will be okay, um, but heating them up with a heat gun can definitely help. Uh, Paul's Paul Zero's got a question. You saw S XS wings has a very similar wing, but instead of soft, what would be the difference? I'm going to assume you mean the shape of XS wings. Um, and I, I'm, I haven't followed the whole market of everybody, what all the companies are doing out there. There's too many out there to even follow, to be honest. Um, but I'm assuming they are still all Mylar veins. Um, they are uh, every XS vein that I've shot is the hard ones. I know they had some soft ones that they were coming out with, but the main difference in general, the excess wings in these is these durable. Uh, you can glue them on with the fletching jig, so potentially they can go on a bit more accurate. Uh, the durability is not just from, you know, hitting them with other arrows, but also if you shoot them through a clicker, this vein will be fine. Whereas most Mylar type veins, if you shoot through a clicker, they'll be at least creased, if not completely ripped off. Um, and you can shoot these through the clicker all day. I wouldn't advise it, but you can. Um, and, uh, let's see, potentially there's many different differences. You know, I find personally when I've done all of the testing, so when I, I the last time I did testing with specifically these wave pros was in 2016, late 2016, I shot wave pros, the original waves, uh, excess veins in, 40 and 50 millimeters, I believe, and the spider veins when they first came out. And I shot, oh, and spin wings. I shot all, all of those, five different types of arrows. I fletched three of three of each of them up, and then I plotted where they landed on the targets, and I picked the ones that grouped the best, and it was the Wave Pros. Um, so uh, that is, though, with the Wave Pros fletched at 7 to 8 degrees helical on my X10s, and that's what ended up working best. Um, I'm always advising people to put as much helical as they possibly can on uh, on arrows with the Wave Pros. And anytime anybody says that they're not grouping well with them, every time they've fletched them on straight because that's the only clamp that they had with a Bitsenberger or like a Joe Jan. So after suggesting to get them a, uh, a helical jig, everything's good to go. And they say they shoot better and group better than their other other. Um, yeah. Just a, a word of advice there. <clears throat> Paul Zero says, what poundage are they rated for? Most veins go up to 45 pounds. Um, these are unrated. You can shoot them at any draw weight. Um, I've I've not shot them out of compound, not the Wave Pros. Uh, the Waves, uh, the original Waves, they shoot fine out of a compound. These might be a little too tall and might flutter without a serious amount of helical on a compound. But that would be at you know 300 feet per second in that range. So, um, but yeah, definitely there's no, no draw weight requirement, either a maximum or a minimum. In fact, that's why I came up with these. Sorry. That's why I came up with these is trying to figure out a vein that would stabilize for women and for, for youth archers, because the original waves were not tall enough, didn't have enough surface area to grab enough air to stabilize for low draw weights. They just didn't shoot well, but there's your answer. And they ended up being more forgiving for higher draw weights. So that's why I like them. The compromise is a little bit less performance in the wind, meaning they drift slightly more than the wave pros or the waves, but still no more than, you know, the best shooting mylar veins out there. <clears throat> yeah, Darth Vader, exactly. The vein master pro for the win is absolutely true. Uh, I, I love that jig. It's the only thing that makes fletching borderline uh, enjoyable. Uh, Night Owl, I'm glad to help. Uh, that's that's kind of you to, to share some kind words. Um, 
I appreciate that. And yeah, I'm glad to help. <clears throat> so um, some other benefits that I found with these uh, is, is made basically in the forgiveness stuff, because when I was plotting those arrows, as I talked about, when I used the, the five different types of veins, what I actually did, let me get something here so I can show you what I was doing. I don't have the actual plots here. I've got to pull mine out of storage. But this is what I would do is I, I printed out this basically and I wrote the different types of veins in each target plot and I just shot them all out of the same bow aimed in the middle and I didn't aim off for wind or anything. And I didn't pay attention to if the groups were higher or lower. All I did was plot the groups and see which one grouped the best. And the original wave vein um, would have the same same rough size group, but the inner, like the inner group when I shot good arrows were really tight together. And so I always had the concern of, okay, if it's shooting the rough, same overall group, but there's a tighter inner group, that means that the ones on the outside maybe are being affected by mistakes, maybe a little bit more. So they're maybe not as forgiving. And so I always had that concern, but I found that those, that group differential of the larger and the smaller size uh, got, went away the more helical I put on them and they got better for me when I fletched them left helical because that was a natural direction my arrow rotated. So the advantage of these over the spin wing type veins, the mylar type veins for me was grouping, now forgiveness, and I can adjust the helical right or left and, uh, and genuinely saw a difference when I compared five degrees of helical right versus five degrees of helical left. The left shot so much better. And I did verify before I did that test after being uh, told by a compound shooter, hey, or asked by a compound shooter rather, um, what direction my arrows naturally rotate. And I said, I, what, what do they? I don't know. <laughs> and so, you know, they said, oh yeah, you take a bear shaft, you go up close, shoot a bear shaft. And then you take a step back, shoot a bear shaft and keep going. And you'll see that the arrow rotates slowly. It's like two revolutions or so per 10, 15 meters or so. Not a lot, but you might as well enhance that spin and keep it going the same direction instead of stopping that and going back the other way with, with, uh, with veins. So, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Paul, yes, tall veins are bad in the wind in general, um, but I can tell you from my testing that I have aimed in the middle, not aimed off in a very windy day, uh, both left to right and right to left. I've done both directions and plotted um, the drift that I was seeing compared to other veins, not just the waves, but the other spin wing type veins. And I found that they didn't drift uh, they weren't as good in the wind as the original waves, but they were potentially marginally better than other veins, than the other spin wing type veins. They were definitely not any worse and were at minimum the same, potentially slightly better, meaning they drifted potentially slightly left. I'm saying potentially because, I mean, it was a half of a ring at, on 122 centimeter face that I could visually guess where the center of my group is. So it wasn't necessarily, um, I didn't have software that could analyze where the center of the group was. So I was doing it all by hand, um, but I found that it was, it was better and um, marginally. And when I made mistakes, they didn't, they didn't, it didn't punish me any worse than any other vein. Um, pretty much all the veins got affected the same when I made a bad shot. Cause I would also, in addition to marking where the arrows actually land, let me see if I can find one. Yeah, this whole top line, you can see um, any arrow that's marked with an X, like there's a couple that are marked with X's, those are bad shots. So I, I always try to track my bad shots as well because I wanna know where the bad shots go. I wanna know if they're any better or worse because how else can I equate forgiveness to something, right? So I when I plot arrows like this, I will always have a spotting scope on the line and I won't necessarily plot them as I'm shooting them because that takes too much time. But I, I've shot enough that, and I look through a scope enough to see 
where my arrows are and I know where the bad shot goes. You can always remember the bad shots, uh, especially if you know, you're shooting 15 at a time and you make one mistake, you'll know where it is. And you just, I mark that one with an X and all the rest with a dot. So yeah, I, I didn't find um, that they were any worse in the wind, despite the bigger profile. They are almost double the surface area as a regular wave. Um, but I find that it's no more than a standard spin wing mylar vein type vein. Uh, so it's no worse. <clears throat> yeah, the boning griffin veins are super tiny and they got cutouts for the wind. And what that, it's not for the wind. The wind does not go through them. They're moving so fast that that's not happening. Um, in my opinion and my experience, what's happening there is it's causing turbulence having that hole there. And what that's doing is it's increasing the drag despite the smaller surface area of the smaller, the vein profile itself. But due, due to the drag itself, it's still causing a disturbance, which will cause that, that sideways drag as far as that's concerning, as far as that's concerned. Yeah, exactly, Darth Vader. The one that stands out that ruins the tens, for sure. <clears throat> uh, John, let's see. You notice that some arrows drop to the left or the right, and you had to turn the knock. Are you talking with... Uh, you, you're, John, are you talking about specifically with the Wave Pros, or just in general, you notice that you could turn the knock to a different cock vein and make them go in the middle instead of hitting lower right. Um, if you're saying specifically the waves, actually, it doesn't matter what you're saying. Uh, what that is, is you're basically aligning the arrow to shoot best for you. It could be the um, the pin alignment. It, okay, so you do shoot the wave pro. So it could be the pin alignment. It could be the knock alignment. It could be the pin knock interface or the, the pin uh, arrow interface, or if you're not using a pin and you're using a unibushing, just replace that with that. And um, if it's slightly misaligned in one way, shape, or form, it can cause the arrow to have different performance. And so the first time I actually realized this was when I was probably 14 years old and I was plotting arrows. I numbered my arrows and I was plotting them at 20 yards. I was shooting um, gold tip uh, ultralight pros and they really it was definitive where one arrow grouped like this over here another group like this over here and so i just rotated the knocks until they all grouped in the same spot so um that's just part of arrow selection and if you're good enough to see that kind of stuff then you might benefit from trying that more often you can actually plot the arrows and not just look at when one big miss happens, but you might, if your group's like this, you might have a, an arrow that groups like this here, one that groups like this here, and one that groups like this here. And as you rotate them, you can actually get them all tighter and get that group better overall. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, poison ear. Wouldn't a curled over wing hold the air more, causing it to put, whereas a straight vein with this, with some give will allow it to pass over the vein. Um, <clears throat> in my opinion, uh, I don't think it matters um, because if you think about it this way, <clears throat> as an arrow is flying, if you got to curve this direction because the vein is curved this way, or say if it's turned because of um, a helical, it's turned this way or a curve, either one. If you're talking specifically about wind drift and say the wind, it's cur curved like this from the top, the wind's coming this way. Yes, it's going to grab this one and push a whole lot more than if the vein was curved this way, the wind would just go over it, right? But we have symmetrical arrows. So that means if an arrow's curved this way on top, the wind's coming this way, it's going to grab more. Well, the bottom vein's are curved this way. So it's pushing less here and more here, right? Now, if I switch that and I curve it the other way, right? Now it's pushing more here than it is here. 50 and either way, it's the same, in my opinion. Um, high level archers that claim, they claim a lot of things. I've had a lot of people claim because in rifle shooting, if you have a clockwise or a counterclockwise rotating projectile going down range and you have a wind that is right to left versus left to right, depending on the 
direction it's rotating, you will hit not just left or right, depending on how much wind is blowing, but you'll also hit more high or more low because as the wind is pushing against it, as it's rotating one direction, it may climb up or it may be pushed down. I have never seen that personally in my experience, not once. The only time that I notice I start to hit low in a crosswind is if I am really aiming off. And I'm talking 70 meters, like 20 to 25 mile an hour winds, straight crosswinds will I start to hit slightly low. And I'm I'm aiming well into the like the blue black line at 70 meters. That's the only time that I notice it hitting low. I'll hit low if I have a headwind and I'll also hit low if depending on the field in a certain tailwind, depending on when the wind comes into the situation. Like usually at archery events, we have a lot of tents on us behind the line. And if the wind's coming from behind, it's got to clear over the tents and then it crashes down on the field and then levels out. And if the arrow is still going up as that wind crashes down, it pushes the arrow down and I actually hit low on a tailwind in certain situations. So what I have found that is happening is most shooters in general, when they complain about hitting low because they're aiming off, is because they're shooting weak shots. They're not shooting the same shot that they would be in calm situations aiming in the middle. They second guess themselves when they aim off and they shoot weak shots and that makes the arrows hit low. So I find that there is absolutely no difference between which direction it's curling, which direction the wind's coming from, and any sort of impact change there at all. The only time that that happens is extreme conditions, 25, 20, 20 to 25 to 30 mile an hour winds. You might hit a little low, maybe, but then also head and tail winds. So, um, yeah, that's at least what I found. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Half the time the shooter's collapsing or opening up too much anyhow. And that's why they hit low. People generally uh, second guess themselves and uh, they're shot when they're shooting in the wind aiming off. <clears throat> yes, yes, Joda. So that's the whole point is he's his, his comment was, you think a straight vein with some helical will more or less have the same effect as a spin wing like the ailerons on a plane. S similar, for sure. Um, that's why I find more helical, the better. And so what I find is um, due to them being more durable, due to them being more consistent, meaning you can put them on more consistently with a jig and also, excuse me, um, the amount of helical that you can put on it is is a lot more than a normal set that people would run on a spin wing. They end up shooting better. Um, I, I personally, at least they don't shoot any worse. I've never had them shoot worse than any other Mylar type vein in any situation, in any scenario. Some, some Mylar type veins, I could get to shoot very, very similar to this, but with some very specific settings on it. And it was only one type of vein that's not even available anymore. Um, but they, uh, they just, they're, they're more durable. And for me, if I can refletch less and have the same performance, uh, well, then I win twice in my head. So, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's essentially the same thing, uh, a vein, straight vein with helical, but the vein can't be heavy. It's got to be a lightweight vein. It has to be very, very light. Uh, the lighter, the better. And uh, the reason is if you put a heavy weight in the back of the shaft itself, <clears throat> so if you have more weight in the back from the heavier vein, it stiffens up the arrow. And that's why an X10 and why this arrow was designed was to make it weaker in the back to uh, take out the inconsistencies of a finger shooter's release. Uh, so that should increase the accuracy or the consistency. Um, <clears throat> oh, also, I haven't announced this yet, but we've got new packaging now, too. We were going more eco-friendly. It's now made out of paper so it can be recycled. Uh, Ryan Bond worked with us, worked with me to design this. It is phenomenal. So we're working on, uh, you know, keeping corporate image the same, just like we have in the, the tiller bolt box back there. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's got the actual size, whoops, the actual size of the vein printed on the front. So you can actually see it because many people complained in the old package, which is right there. You couldn't see the shape of the vein. So there you go. You can see the shape and the color will be listed in the back here on a label that will be uh, printed and put on that. Um, so super excited that these turned out super nice, trying to go with just really high level packaging, keep everything looking really, really nice. Uh, you know, 
as much as possible. Damien's got a question if I would recommend it for barebow at 3D distances. Uh, 3D distances are pretty close on barebow, I believe. Um, personally, I love these veins, especially in field archery. So 3D archery is pretty similar. I've shot them um, in on barebow string walking as close as five meters, and they shoot phenomenal. Um, and on, out of a recurve, I find them to do really, really well on the close bunny targets. Uh, that added surface area stabilizes and straightens out the arrow much quicker. So I believe it's far more accurate at the closer distances for sure. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Ben Tasker Mills. Do I think the shape of the vein, the steep leading edge, has a negligible impact on performance compared to regular shaped veins? Actually, due to what or has a noticeable impact? Yes. So the impact is more stability. So if you look at an airplane, like an aerofoil, generally speaking, wings that are steeper in attack angle, like if this the plane is facing this way, flying through the air this way, a wing with a steep attack angle, meaning a flat straight wing across, has the most stability and guidance basically to be able to control itself. The, 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 the more laid back the wings are, the less stable they are, at least at slower speeds. Um, I don't think that our arrows are going at any sort of speed that we would see any benefit of, of pitching back the leading edge. And um, some people that I know who I uh, trust a lot in the archery industry said that they have done a lot of testing in the past and, <clears throat> excuse me, tested a lot of veins with the same amount of surface area and really changed nothing more than the attack angle, the leading edge of the vein. And they found that the steeper the leading edge, the more um, uh, the more consistent and accurate it would be because of that added lift that that leading attack edge gives on a straighter plane wing. At least that's the way they explained it to me. And like I said, I really trust those uh, that person. And I I found you know, this shape is already, it's the Pro Max 2 shape from AAE. And, um, you know, they already had the die ready. And so I said, hey, can you cut me some Pro Max 2 shapes out of the AAE ribbons and send me some because I'd like to test them. I think they'd be a great vein. And they were a great vein. Um, but for the last several years, uh, I've been unable to convince them to carry it in their product line. So I said, hey, can I white label, have you white label it for me then? And I make it my own vein. And they said, yes. So that's how it came about um, yeah, because I, I thought it fit the bill. And it, it was actually because of that leading edge change was what spurred this exact shape. Um, it, it may There may be a better shape out there um, potentially. And maybe in the future, I'll change, I'll play with that. But at this point, because they had the die to cut these out, and it costs nothing else to uh, set it up. I ran with it, and I think it, it works great. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mar Maria. Um, definitely eco-friendly. It's a lot better than the plastic ones, um, and it's it came in at a good price point as well, so it fits the bill all around. <clears throat> Thanks, Ty. I appreciate that. Uh, Poison ear. Am I going to come out with a pink color? Uh, yeah, at some point. The again, the the setup costs for different colors is very high. Um, like I said, I have to order like thirty something thousand, forty something thousand veins at a time per color, and it's not cheap. And storage is, you know, increasing needs ever so, uh, <laughs> you know, exponentially at this point as the more colors I carry. Uh, but eventually, yes, uh, the plan and the hope is to carry them in the entire color line that AAE has. Uh, because, you know, obviously archery, everybody wants to look good. They just don't want to shoot good. So um, I tr I'm trying to go with the more popular colors to start with. Uh, pink is probably next on the list. It was very, very high in requests as far as that's concerned. Pink and red and purple, I think, were the next few. And then black. <clears throat> uh let's see yeah you're welcome jeff thank you for your support i appreciate that <clears throat> excuse me yeah richard i think i i got your message there on patreon uh i didn't have yet a time to uh to reply there it's been hard keeping up with everything jumping around from task to task i'm really working on eliminating uh a whole lot of workload in my 
non-archery life. So that way I can pour it over to do an archery full time. So I'll, I'll be much better with uh, delivering things I've promised in the past. So uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sending me the message there. I'll have to check that out. I'm glad they're working for you. <clears throat> Carl Green, thanks for all you do. Your wave veins are tearing and splitting, uh, annoying to replace on wraps. Anything and everything is annoying to replace on wraps. You think it's from hitting your own arrows indoors. Uh, you guess the way around this is going with heavier, strong veins. Um, well, it's... Uh, the other way would be to go to a three spot or five spot, depending on the face you're shooting. Um, yeah, it's, there's no way around it. You know, I mean, yes, you can go to a heavier vein, a stronger vein or shoot, uh, multiple spots. Uh, that really helps. You know, I don't really, um, when I'm shooting a three spot, I'll, I won't put more than two arrows in a spot. If I have an arrow in the 10 ring, I won't put another arrow in that spot. The only time I'll put more than two is if I shot two nines, <laughs> but, uh, they just break, they break any vein that is going to shoot well for a finger shooter, uh, is going to need to be thin and lightweight. And because of that, they just tear. There's really no way about it. Um, they're, they're better than mylar veins in my experience or the spin wing type veins. Um, but you know, there's just no way, no way to replace that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I see a fair amount of questions that have come in non-related to the waves and I'll definitely do, I found that it's a lot better if I have more of a focus when it comes to running these lives because it can jump all over the place so fast and just <laughs> like basically come apart at the seams and uh, it's tough to keep up with not just as the presenter but also for people on, uh, on questions. So I really try to keep things on topic or at least really closely related. Um, so please don't feel offended if I'm not answering questions that are not really related to uh, veins at all. Um, I, I'm happy to answer stuff related to veins, even if they're not spin wing type or these veins, the wave pros. And, you know, you say, hey, I've noticed this on a different arrow or whatever. I, I want to hear it and I can maybe give you some feedback, too, and maybe some suggestions if you've tried the waves and they're not quite working for you. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, I do appreciate, though, that people are interested in, in seeking out help, especially here on my channel. I, I definitely, that's why I have the channel is to help people out there and try to fill the void out there that uh, that exists and that, you know, this info just didn't exist when I was a kid. So, yeah. <clears throat> but the answers that you're getting there in the chat are all pretty, pretty good and pretty straight up. So, um, like I said, if you guys are coming in later here in the feed and you uh, miss the beginning parts of it, I will have this available indefinitely on the channel. So you'll be able to go back and watch it from the beginning, no problem. Uh, and then you can skip ahead or do whatever you need to do or potentially watch a few minute blocks of it here or there and then just keep coming back to it. It's going to be available forever, just like all the other lives on my channel. So, And also, if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing this, uh, this feed really helps out. I just, I don't have social media. I don't run social media anymore. I make YouTube content, uh, but I don't even consume, uh, YouTube as far as, um, uh, media uh, is concerned. It's just, I don't have enough time to be distracted and I've got a lot of jobs to do. And, and, uh, so I've eliminated that from my life. So I really appreciate everybody helping me out there. Um, and also if you're interested in the wave pros, um, I've, I've priced them to be as affordable as possible. They're, uh, $17.99 for a pack of 50. They're available on my website, jkaminski.com. I also have links on my website for a few international people, including Australia, Greece, uh, and the UK, as far as for people who are carrying them. Um, so that way, if you have those, those shops local or closer to you, you can save on shipping and duty fees and things like that. Um, I know it's really, really rough. Uh, to pay for some of the outrageous, exorbitant international shipping fees. It's it's kind of unreasonable, but it's the world we live in at the moment. So it uh, probably won't change, but it's the world we're in. <clears throat> uh, Poison here, I've not tried Black Eagle Revelations. Um, I've the only I have a set of Black Eagle X Impacts in the closet here that they sent me a very long time ago. Um, I, I'd like to pull them out and play with them and, and just shoot them and see how they go anyway, but um alexander's asking about what's my opinion on four fletchings instead of three he said spin wings but i say fletchings <laughs> um there's really i don't know i think 
So if you're asking for a traditional shooter standpoint, I've, I've heard some people um, have a opinion on <clears throat> the orientation of the way the fletchings are on the arrow. And if they actually run four fletchings, they can run four smaller veins, get more of the drag, which I, I you know, more drag is always better generally, because that's what stabilizes and straightens out the arrow within reason, of course, as long as it's not too excessive, but more is better in, in general terms. And so when you add the fourth, it adds more drag, uh, but it can benefit for clearance purposes out of a traditional bow for whatever reason. So people like to run those. Um, but I, I don't, uh, and, you know, they run the odd X. It's like an X-wing fighter. It's not a perfect uh, 90, 90, 90, 90 uh, uh, four, four vein. Um, yeah, they're at our core out of Greece. I should have mentioned that. Thank you, John. Um, I, I don't know if my discount code works for those, but if you use Kaminsky at checkout, you get 10% off um, at our core. Um, and I do have links in some of the R core videos. I that may also track the sales there. I'm not sure. I have to see. But yeah, um, <clears throat> RS is a great guy over there at R core. Um, yeah, I mean, I may be interested, Poisoner, in in trying trying some of those arrows. I need to reach out to some arrow companies and things like that and see if they'd be interested in uh, having some stuff featured on the channel. I haven't asked anybody yet. I find it to be a little. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how I feel about asking companies to send me free stuff to review on the channel. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm just uh, a little bit apprehensive about that. So anybody that reaches out to me with, um, with you know, an option of, hey, I run X company. Would you like to try our products out and review it on the channel? I always say yes, no matter what it is. I do have some things in the cabinet that I need to review, like a, a Sniper Zex Tint Plunger, uh, the Whiffler mp1 when they when they had that one i've got that i've got a few things that i need to review and i just haven't had haven't had the time or haven't gotten around to it yet but i, I do plan on that so yes slave master i do plan on trying the thumb draw on the trad bow behind me not that one but a, another bow for sure <clears throat> So yeah, I just wanted to uh, to run this live to kind of share about the Wave Pros um, because I haven't had a chance yet to uh, do a live stream about these yet because I didn't have the uh, Starlink set up in a way that would clear the trees and have a consistent feed. So finally, um, you know, I have that ability and clearly the stream is holding up so far. So hopefully it hasn't dropped out too much. I know it did a little bit in the beginning, uh, but I'll do a lot more live content these, uh, you know, coming months. I don't know uh, when yet. I'll try to notify and schedule them a little bit further in advance. Um, in a few weeks, we will definitely do a live stream uh, talking about the uh, the precision tiller bolts that I'm working on and announcing the Austria hub that will be uh, coming open here. So basically anything that I sell uh, through jkaminski.com will be probably carried over there in Austria. So that way anybody in the uh, EU will be able to get stuff at a much better rate, especially on shipping and duty fees. Uh, so that way, you know, that'll include the Wave Pros and Precision Tiller Volts and uh, lots of other things that we're working on right now. So <clears throat> awesome. Gl Darth, I'm glad you love the Tiller Volts. They're awesome. So yeah, like I said, if you're interested in the Wave Pros, any of the products that I've got on my website, if you go to it, jakekaminski.com, they're available there. Uh, a few international people do have them, uh, the Wave Pro specifically. So I think Quix and uh, Quix, RS at R-Core, and Archery Optics out of Australia has them. Uh, TW, why are Wave Pros better than Feathers? Uh, you got late. Sorry if this question's been answered. Has not been asked yet. Um, as far as the Wave Pros versus Feathers, they're better. Um, number one, they're not affected by inclement weather, of course. So anytime you're going to potentially go shoot in the rain, you'd need veins. You really shouldn't have feathers unless you've got the waterproof coating on them. But even still, that does fail over time. Like I was going to shoot the uh, TDOF shoot, the traditional bow hunters of Florida shoot with my trad bow behind me. I only had feathers fletched up. They're only black schedules didn't align. So I didn't go to the shoot itself. But what I was going to do was going to fletch them up. Uh, with some uh, either trad veins or the wave pros in some brighter colors because i plan on missing it's it would have been my first 3d shoot with a trad bow but i'm gonna do one here coming up in this uh, couple weekend here or there so um 
yeah, the, the, as far as that's concerned, inclement weather, much better. Um, they're not any more durable than feathers. They're probably less durable because you can really tear up feathers uh, and shoot them. So to be honest, they're not more durable than feathers. Um, but um, I don't know. I find them to be very easy to fletch and they're very consistent. So I don't know other than the inclement weather, um, you know, different colors. They're a little bit brighter um, and they're veins. I mean, you, you might want to try veins and play with them because feathers are very, very lightweight. So I can't say that they would be better there you know, as far as the wave pros being better. Cause I don't believe they would be any lighter than a feather. Um, maybe they would, but I really don't think so. I think it would depend on how thick the quill is on the feathers you're running. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know some feathers come in, in some very small sizes. So, um, but I don't, yeah, just trying to be honest without saying that they're, you know, without lying to you, they're, they're definitely better in inclement weather. That's really the only absolute pro that I can come up with for you there. <clears throat> awesome. Tommy, I'm glad. Thanks for ordering those. I keep seeing your orders coming in. So I appreciate uh, all the support you keep putting my way. Thank you for that. Excellent, Darth Vader. You got the the tiller bolts on the first day they were out. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, they they sold out quick, so I'm glad you got them quick. Uh, they're all back in stock now, though. And uh, the win win bolts are being uh, either potentially machined or they're being uh, designed. I think the design is done, but I'm pretty sure some of them are being machined right now, which is awesome. Can't wait. Yes, Farrell. He's in uh, he's in Greece. Yep. Oh, so yeah, particular, for, uh, in, you know, you can shoot a lot bigger feather indoors because uh, they have lots of different sizes there. Um, TW, any plans to make a blackout tiller bolt edition? Not at this point. There are plans for doing more custom one-off things. Like, for example, uh, we have talked as a company specifically about the win and win tiller bolts because so many people have issues with what are the maximum limb adjustment ranges for a win and win riser, right? So what is the max in? What is the max out? How do I even find that? What are factory settings? Well, we can put a stop on the bolts, but due to all of the data I've gathered on many different risers that I've got in the cabinets, um, they we'd have to make a bolt for each bow specifically. So in the future, it might be available to say, I would like a bolt in this color with the stop designed for this riser, right? So there, there will be like a custom shop or a custom option, but as far as offering them, uh, you know, to in general, as far as all black and just have that as added to the product line, probably not going to happen. Um, just because the amount of overhead that would require to stock that item is going to be fairly high, but the benefit of what we're trying to do in the model that we're approaching this with as a business is having the ability to have things on demand. <clears throat> Apparently feathers make typhoon sneeze. So that's, that's funny. So if there's um, any more questions about the waves, I'm happy to uh, field those questions or any veins in general. I'd be happy to to field those kind of things. Otherwise, we'll we'll kind of wind it down. Um, like I said, why these why these are better than mylar veins? Number one is durability. Number two, I find them to be very forgiving, if uh, and 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 far better for lower draw weight people. That was one of the main concerns I had when shooting the original waves, if anybody has shot them in the past, especially with kids and especially women and those with short draw lengths, the original waves just did not work as well as spin wing type veins. And these absolutely fixed that. And the benefit was I saw in my own experience, they were more forgiving than the original waves. And I've shot them at uh, world championships and placed at the highest individual finish I placed at a world championship event inside the top eight. Um, I've shot these at a few other events in, in the United States and, uh, did very well with them and really, really enjoyed them. Despite the double the surface area that compared to the original waves, they don't drift more than any other vein out there. If anything, they're potentially a little bit better in the wind. They're definitely not as good as the original waves as far as the wind drift is concerned, but as far as the trade-off of, 
I can aim off slightly more and get a better, more consistent, more accurate, you know, result on the target. I'm okay with that. So uh, right now they're only available in four colors, white, bright green, yellow, and fire orange. Again, it's cost prohibitive to just go crazy and buy every single color. It's very expensive to start set those kind of things up. Um, but I, I really, really like these. Um, and again, the more helical you can fletch them with, the better. Don't put them on straight. They have to have helical. I would not use a straight clamp and fletch them offset because they need full contact the whole way down the vein or the, down the shaft. If it's not touching, it's going to fall off because you're only relying on brittle uh, CA style glue, which is vein glue, to hold it onto the shaft. And it's very, very brittle, especially in cold environments. You would not be able to grab the vein and hold it and twist it like this. They would all pop right off because these have full contact. They won't come off. I can spin them back and forth each direction and, you know, the vein's still fine. And in a few minutes, the shape will pretty much return back to normal. And even though I was just really rough there grabbing it and twisting it and turning it like this, both directions, it gets a little bit of distortion. But then as time goes on, it'll start to settle back into uh, shape. See, as it's starting to go back now, it's starting to normalize. <clears throat> if you have them and they're wavy, you hit them as long as they're not stretched really bad. Hit them with a heat gun on low, a hair dryer on high, and they'll straighten themselves back out. You can also throw them inside of a hot car on a summer day. And as long as they're not leaning against something, they will straighten themselves back out as well. I wouldn't leave your bow in there, though, but your arrows would be just fine. Um, <clears throat> so let's see if there's any more questions here that popped in here. Um, you're new to feathers, but you'd say it's harder to get a good surface uh, for adhesive, therefore contact with the shaft than the veins. That's another advantage. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the veins are a bit more uh, consistent on the base as far as that's concerned. So it's Tracy's right there. So from vein to vein, feather to feather, it's potentially a bit more consistent there. Um, yeah, yeah, Richard, that the outdoors, these veins just really shine. I love them outside. Yeah, no problem, Poisoner. Glad to help. Thank you for coming in. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, Farrell's got the question, why would they mo be more efficient for the short draw lengths compared to the spin types? Um, maybe not necessarily more than the spin type veins, um, but I, I have found um, there it's definitely not worse than the spin wing type veins because you can get those, there are so many variants of spin type veins. There are, are huge ones, there's small ones, there's ones with way, like a lot of curl, there's ones with a little bit of curl, there's a thousand different variants. So I, I won't make absolute statements. And that's why I'm saying I don't know if it's better because there are so many different ones out there. But in my experience, I find that um, in, in my shooting, they group better than spin wing mylar type veins that I've found. And I've tried many different types. And also with the lower draw weights, the shorter draw lengths and the lower speeds, because of the added surface area compared to the original waves, they shoot much, much better because the waves had some def had a definitive issue when it came to forgiveness, meaning when you made mistakes. When they still shot good shots, they did group better than the spin wing type veins, but the main issue was when they made a mistake, the mistakes went further out because they didn't have the stability and the steering to straighten them back up to make them drop in the middle, right? And so that's where this added surface area, which is almost double compared to the original wave, makes them stabilize way quicker. And, uh, and, and because when they would make a mistake, it wouldn't be as far out. And because I find that they still shot better than regular spin wings, or not I, with them, uh, it shot better for them. Like the original waves shot better for them, uh, but the mistakes were punishing. And when you're in a tournament, you tend to make more mistakes. So why would you shoot something that's less forgiving? So anyway, found one that ended up being more forgiving than than the the spin wing type veins but it's still like i said it's hard to make an absolute statement because i'm sure there are mylar type spin wing type veins out there that i've not even seen so i can't make a statement that says they're better than all of them so like i said i'm not gonna lie and i i have to tell you the truth uh it's just something i'm choosing to do here on the channel <clears throat> excuse me uh, Damien, how would I decide if right or left is the way to go as far as helical is concerned, I'm assuming. So, um, 
in my opinion, the best way to do that, strip the veins off, go to blank bail distance. Like your first shot should be have your stabilizer be about an arrow length from the target, butt. shoot an arrow, right? And then take one step back, shoot another arrow, take another step back and shoot another arrow. You have to make sure that all of your knocks first, I suppose, are oriented correctly. So if you look here on the side of the vein or the side of this knock, it's hard to see with the quality uh, there. This, can you see that notch there? And on this side, there's no notch. So you have to make sure all those notches are facing the same direction when you put them on your string. And as you shoot and walk back, and if after about 10 arrows or so, you'll notice that the arrows are clocking and they're rotating one direction or the other as you step back because arrows do have a natural spin as they come out of the bow. And so I just pick and uh, the the direction that it's spinning, I put that same spin on it with this, the correct direction helical, so that way it enhances the natural spin. Meaning, if the arrow wants to rotate this way as it's coming out of the bow, I want the veins to continue it rotating that way. I don't want it to come out of the bow like this and have veins that stop it to then rotate it back the other direction. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that's really the only way to do it. Well, at least that's the most efficient way to do it. The other way to do it is... Fletch three up right, fletch three up left, and shoot them, plot them, and compare them, and shoot, choose the ones that uh, shoot better. And I did um, verify which directions mine spun, made note of it, and uh, did the actual testing anyway, and it happened to be that the arrow's natural spin direction I actually shot better groups with anyway. So I've proven at least to myself uh, that that works. Does it matter a whole lot? I don't know. I don't think I'm the type of person and have the type of personality to be um, uh, subject uh, to believing in placebo stuff. Um, but the placebo effect is obviously true because it affects a lot of people out there. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Maria, glad to help. Definitely at the 26 inch draw length, I think they would work work excellent at that uh, that draw length. Yeah, and I'm sure that was probably, I'm going to assume, Maria, the issues you had with the original waves was uh, a little bit of a less, it was less than ideal when it made, when you made mistakes. Um, if you could, if you co make a comment and let me know what, what you saw, that would be great. <clears throat> um, Alessandro has a question. Did I compare them to spin wings? And if I did, what were the results? Uh, you're thinking about changing them. So specifically to spin wings, these by far grouped better than spin wings because I found that there's many mylar type veins that shot much better than spin wings on the market. Uh, that's why so many of them have exploded in recent years. Uh, people are just chasing more and more performance. And um, so I did find that they grouped better than spin wings, um, both the inner group, meaning when I made phenomenal shots, I shot more tens with the wave pro and excuse me. And I also uh, found that they were more forgiving when I plotted them on an arrow plotting chart like this here. When I do that, <clears throat> I make my notations. You'll see that some are marked with X's. If you look very closely, like, uh, let's see, let me find one. Yeah like that one right there. That one's marked with an X. The ones that are marked with X's are mistakes because I uh, plot arrows using a spotting scope when I'm doing that. So I note when they're uh, bad shots and I would find that my bad shots landed closer in the middle compared to spin wings. Plus I didn't have to refletch them after shooting them for a mere couple of hours. Uh, I found that at least two, uh, especially at the volume of arrows I was shooting and how many arrows per end, Whereas these, I refletch, you know, once every couple months, basically. Or at least I used to. I don't shoot as much, so I haven't refletched in a long time. I actually just refletched for a video on purpose, uh, only because I needed to make the video, not because I actually needed to refletch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, let's see. KB, have I... I've seen you use the Vein Master Pro fletching on my channel. Could I enlighten you as to what the knock settings are for compound uh, left and right? Um, don't know. Uh, personally, I'm too lazy, with the exception of when I have spine aligned my arrows. So when I have 
gone through like for the Olympic games. Um, I will take these X tens and I run them through my Ram spine checker that I've got. And I will make sure that they're all the same stiffness. And I will also check them radially. That means the stiffness around the, the, the you know, the rotation of the shaft. And I will mark uh, a, a given spot. I'm not one to put it towards the stiff side. Personally, what I do is say if this is a 410, I might find that all of the arrows are roughly from 408 to 412 or something like that, right? And so if that's fine and say I've got three dozen arrows, I want to pick the 12 that are closest together. So I might pick all of the ones that are 408 to 410, right? But then what I do is that I will make a mark where they all say 409. So the 409 stiffness, I will point away from my plunger because I want all the stiffnesses to be the same. And so is that the right way? I don't know, but that's just the way that I chose. And so then I will align everything with the knock indicator to make those things correct. But if I'm not doing that, I just fletch them. And by the time I'm done, I just grab the knock and turn the knock so it looks the same, looks correct. I'm not patient enough to sit there and set them all up like that. And so I just uh, turn them afterwards because it takes, you know, two whole seconds to turn them. The only time you can't do that is when you're gluing uh, knocks onto arrows, like on aluminums with the swages or the swedges, um, or maybe self knocking some wood arrows and things like that. Otherwise, I just I just rotate them, the knock after I fletch them. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're welcome, Ben Speed. I'm glad to help. Uh, this is why I produce all the content. There's a lot of people out there that benefit from it. So thank you. Yeah, Maria says, yes, the originals aren't as forgiving as you would like to see. You still get used to shooting with a clicker and so any arrows are magnified. Yep, yep, that definitely happens. Uh, ben Speed's asking for a, a shout out to her daughter, Lilu. How's it going? Did you come from the fifth element or it's just a coincidence? I don't know. Or maybe she is the fifth element. Uh, I'm glad she's uh, enjoying archery and shooting well. That's awesome. Uh, my arrow lengths are uh, 29 inches raw shaft. Uh, I need to pause really quick. My dog just barked outside and I want to make sure that everything's good real quick. I'll be back in two seconds. <clears throat> Just barking at a car on the road. Uh, everything's good. So if uh <laughs> good, I'm glad Ben Speed. I'm glad I caught the reference or at least recognize names. Uh if there's not any more questions within the next few minutes, we'll probably uh end up uh, ending this feed here in the next few minutes. But I'm happy to answer any more questions about vein related issues, uh, especially bonus points if they're uh, with the wave pros. Uh, we're almost done with the old packaging, which is that one back here behind me made out of plastic. There's only a handful of packages that I have in my possession. There's still a few across the world that have them, but we're now switching to a new, more eco-friendly product, which is a little bit higher end and a lot cleaner. Is it mirrored on your end or is it just mirrored on my end? Cause everything's backwards as far as the label's concerned. Uh, I think it's just my end, but, uh, Fancy packaging with some high gloss finish. It's got the actual size of the vein on it, uh, which is really nice because a lot of people complained in the old packaging. They couldn't see the shape of the vein. Um, and, uh, and then the color will be marked here on the back. But uh, Ryan helped out with these and they are phenomenal. So I'm, I'm happy that we're stepping up our game to a little bit classier product as far as the uh, presentation is concerned. Uh, but uh, yeah, here's the... There you go, actual size, so pretty cool. <clears throat> oh yeah, thanks Martins. I'm glad you're going through the form videos. I'll be doing a lot more of these lives. Um, I'll definitely do more, more of these from time to time. If you've got any suggestions or requests as far as like the next topic, feel free to comment here in the stream um, because like I said, if I do just open Q and A's, it kind of gets a little bit unruly and out of control as far as how many comments come in, but I'm always open to uh, future ideas uh, to, to have topics for lives. Like I said, my live uh, internet feed is now uh, up to snuff, so it'll support this, this whole thing uh, a lot more often. Uh, Rancor, should I use a cardboard backdrop or should you use a moving blanket or something different? I'm not sure what you mean there. Do you mean behind your target butt? Um, 
If so, cardboard's not going to stop arrows unless it's uh, layered flat and stacked together. So you definitely a moving blanket would probably be much better there, but that probably won't stop arrows either. They make specific netting for that. <clears throat> uh tracy will you be able to get the win and win bolts here from quicks in the uk i'm not sure they asked me for a set of bolts uh to check them out to decide if they wanted to carry them or not and um they haven't said anything yet i haven't followed up with them so if you are near them or frequent their establishment uh ask them about that and see if they are going to carry them the win and win bolts they should be ready uh, pretty soon, the last thing we got to do is source the uh, the collet lock, and if we can't find them, we'll just make them um, to 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 get those. But I'm I'm I have a, accounts established with Quicks, so I would hope they'd like to carry the bolts, but I'm not sure they're going to. I'm not I'm not not positive. Uh, I hope they do. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, like I said, feel free to comment here, um, any, any sort of future stream ideas. Um, but otherwise I appreciate everybody, uh, coming out, hanging out, saying hello. And I want to do these more often. We're going to do one in a little bit about the tiller bolts, bolts in a couple of, of weeks as we announce our, uh, d uh, our hub in Austria that's coming up uh, towards the end of March. Shipping should start to happen towards the end of March out of Austria. That will include the uh, the wave vanes and the precision tiller bolts, as well as many, many products uh, that we are currently working on that we're extremely excited to launch. Uh, some very, very exciting big things coming out that I absolutely cannot wait to talk to you guys about. Uh, not quite ready to talk to you about it yet, but it's it's hard. It pains me to not talk about it. I can't wait. I cannot wait. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, yeah, Carl, I, I would like to do reviews and stuff of arrows. I have honestly, I just have what I have. I haven't bought a lot of things uh, myself, so... Um, yeah, I, I would like to do more comparisons. I need to reach out to a few different companies and, and see what I can come up with there. Damien's got one uh, one question about the veins. He's asking if I can do a special edition, special edition with the I am on the vein. Something I actually asked about, not specifically the I am, but I asked AAE about hot stamping them uh, because some of their veins are hot stamped. The old wave veins were hot stamped, but that was because they were made out of a different material. We've changed the materials over the years. And um, this one's a little bit better, but the problem with this one is it can't receive a hot stamp. It won't hold up to the temperature. So there's just no way to get any sort of marking that is permanent on the vein. So they can't be labeled. I can't have branding on them. I wish they could because it's hard to identify what this is without knowing what it is, you know? Um, so it is what it is. I wish it was different, uh, but I just... I just I can't. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Jane, we uh, we miss shooting some of the events from time to time. It's just been uh, so busy. And, uh, you know, she's she's got her own stuff she's interested in. And I'm so dang busy as it is. So uh, getting any time to practice to feel ready for competing is a is a challenge right now. <clears throat> uh let's see yes uh sarah each wave vein weighs excuse me I've, i have the info on my website if you go to jakekaminski.com on there i think it's like 2.1 grains per vein or something like that ring a bell uh uh, 2.08 grains per vein is what they weigh. I weighed of them and then divided by 100, and that's how I found that. So it's pretty close as far as the weight is concerned. <clears throat> Can we see me using a back quiver in my next trad video? I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> Plus, I'd have to get one. <laughs> I've got plenty. I could just put my belt around my neck and have my quiver dangling off the back. Would that work? Um, let's 
see. Yeah, 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 yeah. She Heather did do a lot of good in uh, the beginner barebow videos. It's really hard um, to find the time to get everybody together, uh, me and her together, and our time and and uh, also her her desires and wants and interests have changed. Um, but uh, I'll definitely be. Um, seeing if we can integrate that kind of thing more in the future. We definitely have um, some sports performance type stuff planned, uh, self-care type things planned when it comes to archery and pain and things like that. So we're excited about that. Uh, Suzanne Brewer, how, how uh, does it matter how far the vein is placed from the knock when setting the vein on the shaft? It does matter. Um, in my experience, I just find the further back, the better. Um, you know, a lot of people will do this thing where they, you know, pretend that the finger, the knocks on the string, or they'll actually put it on a string. And then they go like this and they go, okay, are my fingers going to touch the vein when I let go? Cause they go like this, like where the string is. And then they go, oh, it'll touch. So I need to make it more, you know, further forward, but you don't let go of the string like this. It actually just does this. It just rolls off the fingertips and they kind of just sneak by and it goes off. So, um, I find the further back, the better. This is just about like an inch and a quarter from the groove of the knock, maybe an inch and an eighth. Um, the further back, the better in my experience. Both of these are very far back from the groove of the knock. You can see that the white one's even further back on this X10. So that's a, it's about an inch here on the white ones. Actually, if I take a set of calipers, I can measure it and tell you the exact. This is the benefit of having the setup here behind me and doing these lives here of all my stuff in hand. So in inches from the groove of the knock to the back of the vein on my X10s, my preference, and I've done a little bit of testing, not as much as the versus different veins or the amount of spin, just because I didn't have time. It's actually uh, 951 thousandths of an inch. That's in inches. Uh, in millimeters, that's 24.17 inches. That's for the, the white one here on the X10. So that would be a good starting point is right about one inch for you. And here on these Maxima Recurve Pro RZs to the back of the knock is 29.61 millimeters or about an inch and an eighth, 1.16. So I'm pretty good with the eyes still. I can guess my lengths at least in inches, not in millimeters. That's, that's all foreign to me. <clears throat> Um, Jesse, I keep seeing your question there. I'm trying to keep stuff on topic, but as far as the Seguro stuff, I've uh, tried it. I don't like it. It's too soft. Um, I don't prefer it on grips. Uh, I, I much prefer steel putty. I have lots of, uh, videos on uh, customizing grips, not lots, but enough. Um, one with the Arcor uh, grip customizer. I forget what it's called exactly. It's some sort of thermoplastic and also the steel putty on other grips. That's what I prefer. Seguro is too soft and it pops off in my experience. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that covers just about all the questions, uh, at least in regards to uh, to the vein type things. If we don't have any in the next, we'll, we'll call it two minutes, uh, then, then we'll call it. Um, but otherwise, like I said, I appreciate everybody coming out and hanging out, chatting, asking questions, sharing the feeds sharing my videos, uh, visiting my website, jkaminski.com. Again, that's where you can get the veins. And if not, if you're not in the States or you don't want to pay the overseas shipping fees, if you're in Europe, you can check out Arcor. They carry my veins as well as Quicks Archery. They have them. And also we're launching the Austrian hub here within the next several weeks, which is super exciting. They'll be carrying those as well and the Tiller Bolts and many others. Plus, um, it's in Aust Australia through uh, Archery Lenses. I think it's archerylenses.com or .au. I'm not sure. You search that on the internet, but they're carrying the Wave uh, Pro Veins. I have contacted several places out there, but nobody's solid yet um, as far as carrying them. If you run a shop, if you know a shop, and you're interested in trying these veins out, I have no minimum requirements as far as a wholesale account is concerned. So if your local shop is interested at all, they can't get them through Lancaster because I can't uh, make the margins work there at Lancaster in order for them to distribute. And I can be the distributor. That's just fine. So if you wouldn't mind, if you're interested or your pro shop's interested, if you don't own the pro shop, 
have them contact me through my website, jkaminsky.com. The email is kaminskyenterprises at gmail.com. That one works fine. Or the contact me button through my website goes to the same address. And uh, I'd be happy to set them up with a wholesale account. Uh, that includes anywhere around the world. I really would like to get these out to more people. Uh, shipping is just outrageous as far as international rates are concerned. And there's no way around it outside of volume. And so that's, that's where these uh, wholesale accounts come into play. So please, uh, if you can, be my boots on the ground. It's hard. I'm a one-man band basically here. I've, I'm packing products. I'm, I'm working on new ones. I'm working on these videos. I try to reply to the emails and the messages and do videos, coaching reviews, and do coaching and everything. There is so much that I'm trying to manage, and it's tough. Uh, I haven't had the time to sit down for a day and basically uh, set up an email and blast out a bunch of different shops. I uh, just haven't done it. So if you could help out, that would be great. And hopefully it saves you money in the long run, too. So, so yeah, that's why Tracy, that's, if you can set them up locally, that would be great. Um, good. Gl I'm glad to, uh, have brightened her day there, Ben Speed. Uh, yes, you can use a compound stabilizer and recurve. There's no issue there. All right. Well, um, I guess, uh, that's about it. So thank you very, very much, uh, everybody for um coming out asking questions and overall your support i genuinely help or genuinely appreciate the uh the help as well when it comes to getting the word out there and uh you know just saying good things about the channel i really appreciate everybody so um yeah thank you very much and if you're interested again in wave pros head to my website jkaminski.com and in the meanwhile have a good weekend take care and uh, stay safe <laughs>